Marketing Service Providers is pleased to present today's webinar program, AMSP Member Services That Can Save You Money. Today we will share with you all of the member services and benefits that AMSP offers, focusing on how they can benefit your business, help you operate more effectively, and potentially save you a great deal of money. Here you will get an update on what AMSP has to offer and you will see how you can get immediate return on your membership investment. My name is Tyler Keeney, MSP's Director of Member Satisfaction, and I will be your moderator for today's session. Please note that today's call is being recorded and all participant lines will be muted during this broadcast. You may receive technical assistance by sending an email to michelle at amsp.org and we will respond promptly. There is also a chat feature built into the webinar for questions or requests for technical assistance. We have a highly qualified staff ready to help get you connected. Today's presentation will last no more than 60 minutes and includes time for questions. You may ask questions at any time throughout the webinar service using the webinar chat system in the dialog box, which should be to the right of your webinar screen. If you can't locate the chat box, once, once again, email michelle at amsp.org and we will help you locate it. You may ask questions at any time using this feature, but please be aware that they will not be answered until the end of the presentation. I'd like to start the webinar today by introducing AMSP's President and CEO, Ken Garner, to give you a quick update on the association. Ken? Hey, thank you, Tyler. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to have some time with everybody uh, either this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you're at. Uh, let me just reiterate uh, the mission here is to improve your awareness of the individual and collective value of AMSP's menu of member products and services. The better you understand the available roster of member benefits, the greater the opportunity you have to derive value from your engagement with your association. So speaking of value, member value, let me begin today by providing a brief update on the consolidation uh, process with NAPL. Uh, it will, uh, it will take just a few minutes of your time, but I think this is a great opportunity to perhaps bring you up to speed. Uh, first, you know, for some context, I think it's useful to understand that the relationship with NAPL uh, dates back uh, a number of years here. There are a number of things we've collaborated on and cooperated on. Uh, certainly some of you remember fulfillment conferences that were jointly sponsored by the two associations. Some of you will remember a white paper that both of us, uh, NAPL and AMSP, or that, at that time MFSA, commissioned the Winterberry Group to do on becoming a marketing uh, service provider company. And we've had uh, workshops that we uh, coordinated with them on in terms of M&A and, and other issues. So uh, the working relationship with NAPL dates back some time. Uh, there are a number of driving forces uh, behind this effort, uh, but Underscoring all of those is a commitment to creating substantially more member value by combining the two associations who serve, in our estimation, memberships with similar if not identical challenges. Uh, some of those challenges include the fact that uh, we've got, again, as I've, I've talked many times in the past, we've got a significant imbalance between supply and demand. That's led to a hyper-competitive environment out there uh, where, again, our pricing models have become commoditized and uh, not sufficient to drive the type of value necessary to sustain our businesses. That's resulted in uh, industry consolidation and uh, also uh, industry, what I've called convergence, where, again, uh, the roster of products and services by these service providers are becoming more similar. That is, printers offering mailing services, mailers offering printing services. So we've got uh, a situation where, again, there are many similar challenges that confront uh, both service provider communities. And uh, you know, our leadership here has an awareness that, uh, that perhaps addressing these challenges together as a single association uh, may drive more value to members than trying to do this independently. So uh, just a little chronology here uh, to bring you up to speed. The respective boards uh, unanimously passed a joint resolution to explore the potential value and consolidation at our annual conference that we held in June. Uh, at that time, AMSP and NAPL appointed uh, task force members to work with staff to lead the process. And on July 29th, the two task forces and staff members met in a professionally facilitated process kickoff meeting 
and the meeting resulted in a well-defined due diligence process with associated timelines and milestone dates. So some of those dates include the fact that uh, at the upcoming uh, Print 13 show in Chicago, NEPL's board of directors will uh, hold a vote whether or not to move the process to a membership vote. So we've got a number of stages to go through uh, before we get to the membership vote. AMSP's board will have a similar meeting via teleconference on September 26th, again, for the purpose of looking at the due diligence process, all of the assignments that uh, Joe Troncale and I have been given, and the results that we developed as a result of our investigation, and uh, we'll have our vote, our AMSP vote, at a teleconference again on September 26th. Now, if both boards vote uh, to approve moving the process to a membership vote, the voting will take place at our winter conference that uh, will be jointly sponsored by NAPL and AMSP. And I will also say that uh, both boards have had a very strong commitment to transparency and, in and inclusivity in this process. Uh, and so uh, very, very shortly we'll be pushing a significant amount of content about this due diligence process and the results of the due diligence process out to our respective memberships. We've created a special section on our community forum site about uh, the consolidation, and that's where I'll post most of the information, if not all the information. I, I will say this. You guys will have all the information that your volunteer leaders and staff have in terms of making a, uh, an important and critical decision on this, and uh, you will have an opportunity again to vote either yes or no on this at the Winter Conference, again, presuming that both boards move us to that stage. So. That's a very brief kind of update on uh, the AMSP NAPL due diligence process, consolidation process. And so um, I think uh, with that, I'll turn uh, it back over to Tyler to talk about, again, the specific member services. Thank you, Ken. Now I'd like to give a quick summary of a few of AMSP programs. Now, we have a lot to cover in today's webinar, so I'm going to go through these fairly quickly. But again, as a reminder, if you have any questions, during the course of the webinar, don't hesitate to use the chat feature and let us know if you have a question which will be answered at the end of today's program. The first one I want to jump right into is My Mail Connection, which is an online service at mymailconnection.com that matches people who have a mailing, printing, or marketing project with the service providers who are the best fit for the job. The cost to members is $299 per year. Another program that we're very proud of is our um, menu of accreditation services, including fulfillment, sustainability, and most recently, um, mailing service provider accreditation. It's an initial investment of $2,500 plus the auditor's expenses. When the audit for either fulfillment or MSP accreditation is performed at the same time as sustainability, you can add that accreditation for a minimal cost. One member that recently became accredited commented, just going through the process, we recognized some areas that needed better documentation. It was so worth it and will make us a stronger company overall. The next um, product that I wanted to, or service I wanted to mention is our insurance program and information is available on our website. The highlights of our insurance program is that it includes errors and omissions as well as cost to correct, which is very important. And that's administered by um, our partner, Bancorp South. Uh, and the next item that I want to cover was Jackson Lewis Consulting. Jackson Lewis is the association's employment practices firm that offers initial consultations on any employment-related issue as a member benefit. Chris Antone is the lead attorney and is a frequent speaker at AMSP conferences. I personally have always believed this to be one of the best member services that we offer. Uh, additionally, our hotline services is a particularly valuable service, particularly in the postal mailing side as well as fulfillment side. AMSP offers two hotline services to members as a member benefit. The consultations can last up to 30 minutes with no cost incurred by the member company. The hotline services include one for postal, as I mentioned, as well as fulfillment. The postal side is handled very well by the postal professor, George Heinrich. And as well, the fulfillment side is handled by our fulfillment consultant, Lisa O'Brien. And we're very pleased to have them um, helping our members meet their needs. Next, we want to jump to um, a, a relatively new program. We've 
introduced uh, an affiliate program with a company called ASI. As a marketing service provider, selling promotional products is a great way to broaden your product line and obtain higher revenues per customer. And I'd like to turn over the mic for a few moments to our new partner to have them explain how this program can benefit members. I'd like to introduce Michael Walters, Executive Director, Distributor Services with ASI, to share this information with you. Mike? All right, um, if everyone can hear me, thank you, Tyler. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, ASI is really excited about our new opportunity we have with AMSP as well as the AMSP uh, members. Being a part of uh, AMSP and being an exclusive member, we are offering extreme discounting to anyone that wants to join the advertising specialty industry to get that wholesale pricing from suppliers by joining with a company like ASI. So what I'd like to get into further is a little bit more about ASI, the Advertising Specialty Institute. ASI is the largest media and marketing organization serving the ad specialty industry for over the last 60 years. ASI is made up of 25,000 distributor members, which an ASM, AMSP member would be, as well as suppliers from over 60 countries. We provide advanced technology, uh, giving you all the product information you could ever need in our industry with uh, lots of authoritative research to promote your success. ASI also produces five industry magazines that are available in print as well as online. ASI also hosts four trade shows across the year with over 20,000 attendees. The shows are in the following cities. Our first show in January is in Orlando. It's our biggest show of the year. We also have shows in February that will be at our ASI Dallas show. Uh, Long Beach, California in March. New York in uh, April. And Chicago in July. We also host 30 plus road shows throughout the industry that distributors like yourself can come out and learn more about how to sell ad specialties and add that bottom line revenue to your business. We have over 400 professionals dedicated to this industry and ASI's goal is to promote your success selling ad specialties. So let's go a little bit about the industry now. So to give you a brief overview about the industry as far as how big the actual industry is, this gives you a snapshot of revenue in the billions over the last few years. Starting in 2007, we were at $19.6 billion in revenue. Uh, in 2008, we went up to 19.8. And then in 2009, when the economy was struggling a little bit, we were down to 16 billion, but we've been growing ever since. In 2010, we jumped up to 17.4 billion. 2011, back to 18.5. And in 2012, we reached 19.4 billion. Are, we are trending also right now for 2013 to be over $20 billion in annual revenue. So you're joining a growing industry, which is very uh, important and crucial to the success of all businesses. The next thing I want to transition into is what are the most popular products out there in our industry? So this is a breakdown of percent of total industry revenue, what people are buying out there, what your clients are potentially buying from you. 13.8% t-shirts is the largest revenue generator for distributors out there, making up 13.8% 13, 13 of the uh, different promotional products bought. Next, coming in second, 8.7% bags, 8.1% pens or writing instruments. Then following that is some more apparel, 6.7% for polo shirts. And then following that up, lastly, 6% for drinkware. Next, this slide is our what we call our market watch. These are the different markets and the percentage they make up that they're buying. And this, again, was for 2012. Every year we come out with this in our state of the industry address that we produce every year to show the different uh, areas where people are buying. So to start it off, you have 13.8%. That's the largest business sector. It's the health, medical, and hospital fields are buying 13.8% of all ad specialties being bought in 2012, followed by education, schools and universities down at 11.3%, 8.1% manufacturing and distribution, followed up by 7.8% for financial and insurance, 6.7% technology, 6.3% association. 
5.8% construction, and then you can kind of read on further. And this PowerPoint will be available for anybody that wants this after the webinar as well that breaks down the different areas where people are pretty much buying promotional products in the industry. So again, you can see all the different areas and the associated percentages with them. Next, average order size. Now this information came from all the suppliers that do business with all the distributors we have um, throughout the industry. The average order uh, a distributor had placed in 2012 was $1,058. The average profit margin is around 40%. It's anywhere from 35 to 50, so we went right in the middle about 40%. And the next slide I really want to show you that helps hammer this home is the potential money you could make. Uh, many potential ASI members or, or future members wonder how they can really increase their sales in the ad specialty industry. The thing is, all your existing clients out there are currently buying ad specialties, but they may be buying them from you, but in all likelihood, they're probably not buying them from you. They're buying them from somebody else. So the one thing that AMSP members have is, for those that have been around for a long time, you have an existing book of business that you could go to and let them know that you're selling ad specialties and you could really add a lot of revenue to your bottom line. What you see here is a potential revenue chart just to show you uh, what kind of, based upon how many clients you have, what the potential revenue implications that could be to your business. So let's start with the first line here. So this is total number of clients who buy ad specialties from you. So if you had in this first line 10 of your clients buying promotional products from you, the average spend per client is $3,000 because the average order is $1,000 and your average customer will buy three times. So if it's three, three times 1,000, is $3,000. So if you have, we're having a little background noise, I don't know if everyone can still hear me, but if um, your average client buys three times at $1,000, that's $3,000. So if you take 10 clients at $3,000 per client worth, that's $30,000 in gross revenue for the business. Then you take out your piece, the 40% profit margin, you're looking at $12,000 of uh, additional revenue to your business. If you got up to 25 clients buying from you, at that same factor of $3,000 per client worth, that's $75,000 in annual revenue at a 40% profit margin takes you to $30,000 in uh, profits to your business. At $75,000 with those same factors would result in $90,000 in revenue to your business. And at 250 clients, once you worked up to that, you're looking at $300,000 in annual revenue that could be for your business. All right, so I'm going to move to the next slide. Yeah? Now, why would your clients want to buy um, promotional items from you? Because when they hand it out to their clients, 87% of the people, when they receive an ad specialty, they remember the advertiser that was on the pen, the mug, the T-shirt. So it's got fantastic recall. So kind of going over the cost per impression, uh, basing it to some of the other industries out there. Primetime television is uh, $1.8 cents per uh, impression. Magazines, same thing at 1.8%. And then you see the cost-effective ad specialty is $0.06 cents per impression. The only two um, other mediums out there that came in a little bit lower was radio as well as internet. So it's an excellent cost-effective way for your clients to brand their image. As far as the source, where are people getting their business? Where are distributors, just potential distributors, just like yourself, getting your business from? 83% are referrals. So again, to kind of go back, you all have a book of business. If you tap into your book of business and go in there and ask them for their business or ask to be able to quote their business and then ask them for referrals, that's where 83% of the revenue is coming from according to 2012. The other 42% are 42% are coming from websites and email marketing campaigns and ASI has all that tech technology to help you with all those things as well. All right, transitioning to the next slide. So the top five reasons to sell promotional products. Number one, you become that one-stop shop for your clients. They don't have to go anywhere else 
and you get to be, again, being a market service provider, provide them with everything. It's going to help and uh, give them an excellent experience. Number two, there is no inventory or expensive equipment to buy because this is an outsourced industry. We give you all the technology to make presentations and send them out to your clients, and then you will outsource them, and be, they will be fulfilled by the suppliers. And half the time, they will, it's up to you, but they will ship them directly to your clients or ship them to yourself where you can drop off to your clients as well. It's very low cost to get in the industry. And for an AS, AMSP uh, member, it's even less expensive for you. So the average order size, we covered this in detail, but again, the average order size is a little over $1,000. We rounded it off here with a profit margin of 40%. You already are probably dealing with your clients' logos and artworks. You would just be putting it on a different thing. You'd be putting it on a mug, a t-shirt, a pen. So it's an easy transition for you. And last but not least, probably most important, you want to increase your sales by selling to your current clients. And it's an excellent way to get into the industry is by going and asking all the clients who are currently buying them from someone else, letting them know that they can now buy them from you. So you can be that one-stop shop. Now, we give you all the necessary technology to be successful. Um, one is our ESP tool, our ESP web tool. This is our sourcing tool. So when your clients ask you for different products, you have instant access to over 800,000 different products out there. You can access this technology from any web browser using a PC or a Mac. It utilizes our intelligent search and has guided navigation down the left-hand side that helps you quickly and easily narrow down these 800,000 products to exactly what you're looking for. We also have, give you the innovative marketing ideas. There's a presentation tool within this opportunity so when your clients ask you for things, you can build beautiful presentations. We have all the design and the layout already set up for you. All you got to do is choose the product that you want to present to your clients. And you also will have the ability to upload their logos utilizing our virtual sample tool so your clients will see exactly what it will look like with their logo on it. And we have integration for ordering. We have our ESP orders that's also part of this, which allows you to print out invoices as well as create purchases. So from a technology standpoint, we have our ESP websites. These are websites that are client-facing websites. These websites you set up within minutes, link them to your business site, create a tab for promotional products, and when they go searching for promotional products, they can browse from over 300,000 products. They feature products of the day, video, social media integration, as well as this virtual sampling where the clients, while they're shopping, they'll have an excellent experience while shopping. They can go on, upload their logos, see exactly what the product's going to look like, and then these are all e-commerce enabled sites so your clients can buy promotional products from your website and we make it simple and easy for you. And they also can uh, opt into newsletters if they choose that are also client state. Well, I just wanted to give and I wanted to thank everyone um, for the opportunity. ASI is really excited about the new partnership. Again, being part of AMSP, you have extreme discounting at high levels to get into the promotional products industry, become an ASI member and get that wholesale pricing from the supplier and you get to do it at a fraction of the cost as everybody else does. If you're coming just, you know, if you weren't associated with a, a membership organization like AMSP, you'll be paying uh, at least 60% more. Uh, that's the significant discounting that we give. So it's an excellent opportunity for you being an AMSP member. And again, I wanted to thank everyone for their time. I'll be hanging on to answer questions throughout the uh, rest of the webinar, and I'd like to turn it back over to Tyler. Thank you, Mike. That's a lot of great information in a relatively short period of time, and certainly a great opportunity for AMSP members. Now we're going to go ahead and, and start covering the next portion of the benefits that we'll be discussing in today's webinar. Again, as a reminder, all this information is available on our website. Um, we're currently going to um, be promoting our winter conference being held in Phoenix, Arizona, February 3rd through the 6th of next year. Um, so if you go onto our website and you see some content summarizing some of the past um, sessions that were covered um, in San Diego this past June was our annual conference. 
and there were recorded sessions. So you can also have that ability, even if you weren't able to attend, to purchase um, those recorded sessions. Our national conferences typically run three to four days and cover a variety of subject areas, including mailing, fulfillment, printing, and marketing services. Registration fees, $850 for the first registrant and $500 for each additional registrant. And this year we added something new, which was a young professional category for professionals that were 35 years old or younger. Most sessions, as I mentioned, are recorded and available for purchase shortly after the event. One conference attendee recently commented, just the exposure you get to the that have been in the business for years and years, they have a wealth of experience and they are very willing to share. Smaller scale, equally as important, are, are one-day workshops. Um, sometimes they're referred to as regional training workshops. They may take place in a particular region of the country. Um, oftentimes they fo focus on postal and mailing related issues and as I said, last up to one day in length are held monthly and there is no cost to members to participate. In addition, every three weeks a separate Post Appoints webinar is held covering topics addressed in the previous issue of Post Appoints. Most of our webinars are recorded as well and available at our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash AMS providers. Again, that's www.youtube.com slash AMS providers. That link is at the top of our homepage if you're interested in reviewing some of the past recorded sessions that we've uploaded to YouTube. Upcoming webinars can be found on the AMSP website as well. Networking at AMSP events have proven invaluable for many members as they build a network of as only another person in the industry can. But that network is also available 24-7 through AMSP's online communities. All members are automatically subscribed to our online community forum, community.amsp.org. The primary forum is open to all members, and members can receive the posts in real time or in a daily digest format. Recently, we have added the ability for members to access the discussion forums via mobile devices with mobile optimized pages. The important benefit that we'd like to cover today that AMSP provides that may not be as visible but has far-reaching impact is advocacy efforts. I'm going to once again turn the microphone over to Ken Garner, AMSP's President CEO, to review the current legislative activity and AMSP's advocacy work. Ken? Thank you, Tyler. Uh, again, uh, very quickly here as uh, we're running out of time. Uh, if, I hope you've been following uh, the posts on uh, the community forum and the articles that Ben has been writing in uh, postscripts about uh, legislative activity. Hopefully most of you know that we have two bills now. We have a House bill uh, from Representative Issa and his team. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's a very good bill. It's much better than uh, what he was proposing in the last Congress. And as a whole, I would say AMSP uh, is uh, firmly behind the, the provisions okay. of the House bill. On the Senate side, a bill has been uh, proposed by Senators Coburn and It's much less uh, appe appealing to AMSP. Uh, the biggest problem that we have with the Senate bill, frankly, is in the rate-making provisions of the bill, where essentially uh, the rate-making provision that was established in 2006 uh, where rates are tied to CPI and capped at CPI would uh, essentially disappear and uh, that rate making uh, process again changes considerably left in the hands essentially of the Board of Governors and uh, that's not something that we can support as an association or as an industry and we have voiced that message loud and clear uh, and in fact uh, uh, Deputy PMG Ron Stroman invited myself and about five of my colleagues down to postal headquarters to try to lobby us uh, to try to support this so that we could get both bills to conference. And uh, we said that uh, as appealing as getting both bills to conference would be, because that's a necessary step to getting law, uh, it was something that that provision in the Senate bill was just something that we could not support. Uh, since that time, we've had some uh, good meetings with Senator Carper. Senator Coburn is a bit of a challenge for us in the sense that he is uh, very much an open market kind of uh, supporter. So we, we've got uh, work on the legislative side here. Uh, it's tough to tell uh, what the possibility or probability would be for any type of legislative passage in this Congress. 
Uh, it always seems that things crop up that uh, Congress deems as being of greater importance, and we'll see how it, it goes through uh, the balance of the, of the legislative year now that they're back from uh, their recess. Also, uh, top of mind here is uh, exigency. Uh, and again, all of the back-channel communication we have would suggest that the Board of Governors, uh, who will meet soon, uh, will, will uh, support an exigent move. Of course, as uh, you all know, exigency is a request for uh, rate uh, relief above and beyond the CPI cap uh, based on extraordinary and exceptional circumstances. And you'll recall that we had a similar kind of exigent request or issue uh, a few years ago. Uh, and really, again, it's just uh, so many more questions and answers at this point about this exigent issue, although we do believe that we'll likely be facing something, although we just don't know exactly what the scope of the exigent increase request will be. I would uh, ask that you pay particular attention to the issue of uh, postal points, which will be coming out, I think, later this afternoon or certainly by tomorrow, uh, because a good portion of the postal points issue that uh, that Leo's put together is dealing with the exigent issue. Uh, just keep in mind that we're active in that process. We are a, a member of the Affordable Mail Alliance as uh, an executive committee member. And so, again, the communication that comes out of the AMA uh, certainly has our signature, has our support, and, uh, and we work actively in that area, as we do uh, certainly in legislative advocacy as well. And, uh, you know, uh, through Leo's efforts, my efforts, and the uh, efforts of our MTAC representatives, uh, we're constantly working at L'Enfant Plaza on postal policy issues. So uh, having covered that, I'll turn uh, the podium back to Tyler. Thank you very much, Ken. The next section that we're going to cover briefly are MSP publications. We have a few publications that are widely read and accepted as key industry resources for information. These include Postscripts, or PS Postscripts, which comes out monthly. Postal Points, which Ken mentioned, comes out every three weeks. Wage and Benefit Study, typically published every other year. A Pricing Study, focused exclusively on mailing-related pricing. And Performance Profiles, otherwise known as Financial Ratio Study. Those are just a few publications that we have um, available through the association. All that information, again, if you're interested in possibly purchasing any of those publications, is available on the AMSP website. I've now covered just about all of the AMSP's current offerings. If you have any specific questions, you can always call us at 800-333-6272 or send an email to me at tyler at amsp.org. Or if you're going to be in Chicago next week, you can come visit us at Print 13, September 8th through the 12th, will be in booth 5418. Included with our exhibit, we'll also be offering an Ask the Experts section. We'll have a number of different um, consultants available for free 30-minute consultations. And we're also co-sponsoring the Deliver ROI Theater with the USPS. And we'll be delivering 16 presentations during the course of the Print 13 show.